I really only wear pink a lot of the time. <laughs> I did I not press play. Oh! I have no power for this Whoa! controller. I'll look away, I'll look away. What the there heck we go. happened? I, that was so weird. That just started playing. Is there... That's pretty creepy. Is Do you have a mic in? Why did it start playing? I don't know. Okay. That was the weirdest thing. Kaneki just suffered in front of us. Yeah. It's like, hey, you guys are filming. Let's go. That's what the show's trying to do. All right, show. All right. Fine, fine, fine. We got Crunchy it. roll. Hey, everybody. I'm Adam. And I'm Sam. And, and we are Working Title. We're here. It's the finale of season one of Tokyo Ghoul. This episode is called Ghoul. And this dude just said, it's a spoiler, I don't want you to see it. <laughs> Damn, I really wish I looked so I could be like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> well, last on, we were at All Out War. Thank we got you. some crazy competitors about to go at each other. I'm hyped as hell. Anteku's gonna save Kanki. The One-Eyed Owl? Yes. Just made his appearance. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'd really like to see what this guy or girl or thing yeah. ends up looking to be. Yeah. And how many people it's gonna kill. Yeah. So make sure you like, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave a comment down below, letting us know your thoughts on season one, season two, and season three. Which one's your favorite? What is actually? Let's just focus on season one for now. What's your favorite episode? Mm -hmm. Your favorite character from this season? Mm -hmm. And then stay to the post talk because. Your boys are going to be talking about it because it is a wrap on season one after, after this reaction. Bunch of. Bam! That's very disturbing. I didn't see the flower. I actually. Why? That didn't even surprise me. Why are there flowers? Whoa. Reason. Ew. Even if you close your eyes, it doesn't help. Yeah, they grow back. To <laughs> eternal torture as a ghoul. Yep. I think it was grosser to see his feet with the flowers. Something pure, with something horrendous. Flashback time. Oh, my flowers. Mother's favorite or something. Or it was her job. Okay. Uh, I don't think they're real. They pretty look real. I was gonna ask, is that paper? Yeah, it looked like it was. Oh. Oh, man. I would 
love to think this is gonna be a joyous episode, but uh, it's gonna be the complete opposite, man. This piano. I was gonna say the music's not really helping either. <laughs> ケン、そうしたっていいのよ。優しい人はそれだけで幸せなの。傷つける人より傷つけられる人に優しい人はそれだけで幸せだって僕にそう教えてくれた。優しくて素敵ね。だからこんな目に遭うの。<笑> <laughs> go back, go back, please. Now, why, weirdo? Uh, it just feels like it's like you just get off to this, and it's an eternal get off because it keeps coming and you get, keep getting rewarded. If you tear a person apart, did you read that? You know what it's saying? Yeah. Right. Sound... Which hole is it going in? We put our bets. Your ear. He said the ear. I can't listen to this. Oh god, I can't listen to that fucking sound. Oh, the feet. He said this is all. This is all because of Kenao, K N O U. He turned you into a ghoul using Rize, he said. about being a ghoul a long time ago. <laughs> but was that what Kaneki was actually a ghoul? I don't know. He wasn't wearing an eye patch there. Yeah. Well, just because. What the hell? Oh, is the two? Did he figure out the two were helping? Oh, no. No! Damn. Yep. And oh, they're slowly chin. And they're lovers, too. Good answer. Good answer. Yo. 
that's why. Well, he said if you don't choose, both of them die. Well, that, that's the... Mmm! Mmm! Just do it, man! Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Oh. <laughs> what a transition. That's disgusting. Focus. This is not a fun episode to watch. Yeah, finale. No, it's not Kanaki. Unless this is some time loop stuff, it's not your fault, man. You like the broken music? That's so good. Good use of music, man. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. But you, you can't even know that. What, what if Jason was just playing it? You can't account for the murder himself. Oh. I feel bad for that too. Man, we have to watch it again. Oh! Wow. I don't even think they showed that last time. No, they didn't. Yeah. Huh? This is all in his head. I was like, that didn't happen? Oh no! Not he, they. transitions in this episode. Stop messing up the piano! Play the beautiful song, stop ruining it. What is this, Riza? You're so weird. Gosh. Gosh, I don't know if I could still like advice from you is a scary thing. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, okay. Whoa. What the It's the world. That will do. Oh, to live is to devour others. Gosh, what a Here we go. slogan. There we go. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, really? Okay. Devour this. Oh, wow. The version I've seen, he says, fuck you, right there. Watched it online illegally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was illegally. Oh, he took a bite out of him. And he said, that's foul. What? Fish. 
Ugh. Oh, what a hell of a way to describe. Describe. Wow. I like the white hair. It looks good. Oh! Ah! Ooh. Whoa. Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Holy cow. They're gonna cut. They're gonna cut like a Michael Bay film. Do not. Season one, they didn't even spend any time with any other characters. Yep. What a finale. So, oh, I had planned to oh. dye my hair this past weekend. Obviously, that did not happen <laughs> because when I showed up to a hair salon on Saturday, they're like, "Yeah, it's going to cost three hundred dollars, and it'll take three different sessions." Yeah. yeah I, I was know. like. Uh, this doesn't work at all. Yeah, yeah. You have to. You have to do. It's over a process. You also have yeah. like very super dark hair. dark hair. Yeah, I know. And that would fry your hair, dude. Well, my plan was to dye all the long stuff and uh, white, and to do everything else black. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, they would take it to yellow first. Yep. Or like like a brownish orange mm -hmm. to a yellow, and then to a yeah, white, then to a platinum, probably. Yeah, they were like, yeah, the first session is gonna be hundred forty. And the next one will be 80, and the next one will be 80. It's not worth the bit. No. When the bit goes too far, it's no. not worth it. It would have looked cool. I know, Obviously, because when have... when his hair turned white, I was going to pause it and like take a, a beanie off and be like, yo! But that would have been a great reveal. Yeah. Still not worth it for the yeah, bit. Yeah. I would have loved it, but yeah. it's all good. Screw you guys. Don't even encourage him. so unhappy, because I was like, I was thinking the whole weekend, and I was like, I just cut my hair short for no reason. I and I just know. shaved all my good. facial hair off Tell for no good. reason. It looks good. I like it. Sure, it looks good. It's handsome. Yeah, honestly, Appreciate just on the white hair real quick, I want white hair too when I'm old. I think all my older, like all people that are in my family that are old and have turned hair, it's gray. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be lucky enough to get the white. My uncle, who was married married in through marriage, he was not related to me, had like pure white hair. I always told him I loved it. And after, of course... Game of Thrones, Targaryens, and yeah. every character I've like ever made in an RPG, I've always had white hair for them. You'll hear that from our Full Metal combos. But um, I decided when I'm an old man and my hair turns gray, that will be the time to convert it to white because mm -hmm. at least it's a lighter tone, yeah. so it's more doable. Mm -hmm. And my hair will be falling; it's already falling out now. Right. It'll fall out then. So what do I have to lose? Right. It'll be interesting. But Who knows? Maybe one day I could still do it. Kaneki pulls it off well. Yeah. This Fuck. Was, yeah. Talk about white, those flowers. This was such a, a bizarre finale, if I may say so. Not in a bad way, but definitely unique. Because this felt like a episode 9 of like a show, or the penultimate, before the end result. Mm -hmm. Ugh. 
How how do you know how long people had to wait before Tokyo Ghoul Re came out or the season two came out? How long do people have to wait after this? Uh, I don't know. Because I I'd be curious. That's a I hell of a thing to mm. throw at your audience, and everybody's like, "But what about Toka? Mm. What about Amon and everybody that they might like?" Damn, because if this was fully concentrated on Kaneki, Rize, uh, Yamari, mm-hmm. Yam- Jason. Yamori, I think they call him, Jason, mm-hmm. and of course the mother, and then brief cameos from Hide, Toka, and like the dream sequence, but yeah, very cool episode. I liked it. I liked it. I'm... I think of the flower world as like Tanjiro's... In your soul, spirit, his spirit world. Yeah, yeah. So that's like that. Kaneki's spirit world. It's just untainted. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> the blossom. It started to blossom in a sick, twisted way. Mm-hmm. In a like a uh, a soul searching kind of way. Maybe not for the better. We'll have to find out. I'm not sure. I would. I can't say right off the bat that Rize's advice is the best to absorb, especially because it's her. I don't know. She seemed rather sinister when I met her. Um, but, yeah, interesting flashback. We explored a bit of the mom's life. She was a workaholic and uh, got to the point in her life where she just made it too much of a like commitment that everything else got sacrificed, that being Kaneki mm-hmm. in the process. And herself. And herself. And, um, well, and that led to her death. Yep. The sister... I, Maniacal. I don't don't know if we'll show up with her ever mm-hmm. again, but she basically manipulated her. Um, to, it seemed like I mean, it looked like she was being taken advantage of. And then Kaneki, we like the father. We don't know much about him. It seemed like he died early. They said, and I th- I would assume he said before he can remember. I would assume that I would like I would place my bets on what I said. Like he probably read the books to like feel some form of relation with him. If there's like nothing else, mm-hmm. that makes sense. If you, like, don't grow up with your parents, you might try to... If you took interest, you might take on a hobby or wear something of theirs in order to, like, feel closer, read a book, see what your father was into. Um, yeah, and that basically... I mean, that does explain Kaneki's persona rather well, I'd say. His, like, quiet demeanor. Um, comes from a troubled past, and Rize is no help in... Uh, in Taking advantage, I will say that's like taking advantage. She she's fully aware of who he is and kind of taking that as a uniformed way to encourage him in his next path in life. I will say, certainly helps for the real world and what's happening. This like um, philosophy of screw the world, I'm gonna do me, what's best for me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who else like pays the punishment for that, which does get you far in life definitely selfish hopefully he doesn't make that his slogan going forward when it comes to people like toka and uh, mishiki and or mishiki mishiki so makide or mishiki uh, but i mean hide too like everybody in his life uh, i'd be curious Yashimaru. To see, i'd just be curious to see how far he pushes that um Hidemi. that new idea newfound ideology will he use that is this him accepting it to get her approval so that he can unlock this power is this him taking on this new form because he's been such the opposite? That's what I think it was. When she, when she said, do you accept me? I think it was him finally accepting he's a ghoul. Right. But that, and that's weird, too, because... He's half. Half-ass. It's like... It's kind of the thing I feared early on. Like, do you fully give in just because it will temporarily benefit you? hmm Because taking this will mean that you will do better at your current occupation. And he doesn't want to give up his humanity. Yeah, which but he's ultimately, afraid of what... But that, and that, that's ultimately what, I want, what yeah. I'm worried about. Like, you could say the mother... Left you alone. Left you alone and did wrong, but I don't think that's how she saw it. I mean, her overworking, while the relationship might have been severed to Kaneki, might have been her way of allowing him to even live. Right. I mean, what, is, what, what happens if she didn't do that? Mm-hmm. Overworking does crush you but it's a that it's like a it's a sacrifice for sometimes i mean she had all the time with parents in modern day times parents sometimes sacrifice relationships with a kid and I'm, I'm not condoning that right and sometimes they think that it's the they do justify it saying it's for the kid and and that's it's one big debate in the world since the, dawn, since the dawn of time and yeah you're right 
has setbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, AKA we see Kanki like lashing out like the you it, it's it's traumatizing for a kid too to like not have that those figures in your life. Um, Especially at his age. Yeah, but some you know sometimes it's easier it's easier to just call out the mom if you're not the one living in those situations. Mm-hmm. You know, you, we might not be the one who has to have those unfortunate circumstances. But um, yes, yeah, so it's such a, a really cool episode. I, I'd say right off the bat, just to like I'm not going to jump to the end of this discussion real quick, but easily the best episode, just in terms of like bringing out some deep themes. Finally, mm-hmm. like the show has had good themes, but it's like they'll bring it up and it's like whoa. They know this was the show's theme, and like I mean, they kind of seed it, but like, and then they bring it up, and then they like don't talk too much about it. I'd say the closest one was Amon and Kaneki's confrontation in episode eight, where we're like, okay, like nine, nine? eight, it's my, bad. Nine, eight, my bad, it just eight. came out. Um, so like that was a good one. But this one, this one was the best in terms of like laying down some deep, deep thought into what I honestly was hoping would be earlier, considering this is a senin. Mm-hmm. Um, now I know, I know uh, you don't have to tell me in the comments I do know that people say the manga is objectively better or at least get, helps these themes flesh out a bit more so I'm aware of that um, so since you're on that do you want me to tell you why people don't like the rest of the show do tell me Yeah. Okay, like, so well, now second, we're at this point the second season has absolutely nothing to do with the manga the second season the author just decided to do an alternative story That's and then it picks up when season three comes out, that's when it's manga. It picks back up. Yeah. Weird. So did they just do? Is it? Is it like they change the story completely, or is it they try yeah. to make it filler and as it just gets, as non consequential to the manga manga's integrity? Yeah, it's like an alternative story. So they they go against the manga. Yeah. So was it one of the problems some anime face where it, it caught up too quick with the show, like it wasn't finished? What was the reason? Uh, I don't. I don't. Like I said, it like, was it was the author's decision of the for, anime. Yeah. Weird. You know that that makes me want to see season two, and then it makes me want to comparatively read the manga and see why. Because mm. that's that's weird. Because normally you face a full metal situation where you start a show, the anime doesn't uh, surpasses where it was, mm-hmm. or full metal not brotherhood. And then they have to just make it up as they go. Or like AOT, you have to wait three years until you get the next season. Or um, like My Hero. I, I just heard that. I don't think the next season will have enough to... Compl- uh, ca- it will catch up to the manga. Back to Tokyo Ghoul, though. That's a weird choice. I can see where people are upset then. When I'll, it comes I'll, to Because I'm actually... That sucks. Because I actually was really liking what we were picking up, finally. If I can remember from what I'm reading, or from what I read... I think, like, it is the author of the manga who said, I want to do a completely different story for season two. Just to see how it went? Yeah. Wow, that's a shame. That, that's even crazier if, the, like, the guy who was in charge also was mm-hmm. in charge of the show. Sometimes you get these stories that are, like, comic books or uh, anime or movies, book adaptations, and they, they don't bring on the person who originally helped, yeah. and then it's, like, a bastardization. Mm-hmm. So it's even weirder that it's, like, the guy endorsing a bastardization of like previously supposedly good work mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I've been told that Tokyo Ghoul is really good in the manga mm-hmm. and that like you should it's almost like berserk level where hey show's not great go watch go read the manga that's the best form to consume it yeah. and then same with berserk like there's just not been a good adaptation so just go read the manga jump everything else jump jump the ship yeah and then that also died right before he was finished he got lucky though because but they he had, had a trusted people, team a trusted team to Carry to out finish it. Which is always good. Yes, it is. Have a will. Um, but that sucks. He had a lot of diseases too. Just to just to jump back into the finale though, wanted to shout out the visuals. All the transitions. See, it's funny. I can now understand like the torture scene last episode. Yeah. This one. I think I jumped the gun. Those just of what long. I was remembering. This one was long. This one was yes. Yeah. And I'll say yeah, I was very uncomfortable in this episode. I watched this. Be- I, I, maybe I'll shout him out if I can remember or send you the person. But I watched this guy who like breaks down music, and he did a great explanation as to how music or visuals can help set a tone. Like, if you're in a dark room, you might find comfort in it if you hear like something that matches the vibe. But if you hear like a baby crying, 
it might be a little unsettling. Or if you see blood a movie. in a baby, mm-hmm. like the sound, or like joyous music, if you hear baby music that would play for like a baby in a crib, and you see like a dark room, it doesn't blend. Mm-hmm. We've trained our brains to not accept that, so it's weird. Um, so similar with this, like the white flowers, you've trained your brain to think that that's like your peace, pure peace, tranquility, good smelling. <laughs> And then just his legs, just sitting mm-hmm. on top of them. Now you see what was happening to his toes. Right. And I his saw, fingers. I mean, he looked like a plucked bird. Yeah, they're regrowing. He looked like a plucked bird, so that was pretty gross. And that, that once again, that also helps, like, to see something so beautiful be so corrupt. Mm-hmm. And it, it's more effective than watching Jason in the dark room a torture him. It's worse to see the after effects in the white world yeah. than to see it. Though I will say it's pretty gross. The sound effects are pretty effective. I try to look away and still hear no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse than just like hearing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your imagination's worse than like the actual image. And they actually, funny enough, they didn't show a lot of Jason inflicting da- like actual damage. Yeah, they did. It was more off camera, and yet they showed him taking damage at the end through Kaneki. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there's like a a censorship type of thing where kind of like alien blood is acceptable. But, like, if the villain gets hurt, it's more acceptable rather than, like, the hero. Mm-hmm. I don't maybe, know. maybe it's more of, a, like, a distressing thing. I don't know. I don't know either. It's also weird. The show's been weird with its, like, choice because they had a really weird censorship in, like, the first episode. Yeah, and it happens again in season two. Yeah, but then, I don't know like, if you want me to talk about it. N- not yet, but, like, okay. but then, the, like, the show was rather gory in general. Mm-hmm. The show's been gory. And not the goriest thing I've seen, but pretty gory, so... So I'll make sure I don't skip over anything. Yeah, Jason, look. He's cool aesthetically, but screw Fuck him. In the head. Screw him. He's messed up. Yeah. Sucks. What comes around goes around, and now he's inflicting it on Kaneki, and well, Kaneki's inflicting it back on you. Because mm-hmm. ultimately he he sided with Rize for the time being. She kind of like set this like boundary of like how I see the world, so if you accept how I see it, we can make this happen. I don't know what the whole thing was, like, him laying on her. That was, like, it was all, like, weirdly, like, homosexual in a sense. Like, give yourself to me. Like, take my body or... Mm-hmm. Well, Kaneki ate her right yeah. after. Yeah, no pun intended. But that, but that's what I mean. Like, it was, like, weird subliminal stuff going on. I mean, similar to the first exchange of their body in general with, like, the, the naked that was bodies, so cool. like, separating. Which yeah. was really beautiful. Um... And then, yeah, whatever he said was close enough for her to be like, that'll do. And that's, it's the world, that's not, what's creepy. Not me. That's what's creepy. It seems a bit like a deal with the devil in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. as long as you, look, I don't care if you write it in cursive or, like, just your initials or, or draw the blood. Like, Ghost Rider. Whatever works. Yeah, uh, it's a signature. So it's a little, it's a little like, mm-hmm. so I wonder if Kaneki's going to go into, like, a dark arc as opposed to, like, early, spoiler for my hero, three. To one face a dark Deku very early mm-hmm. into his life rather than later on. Yeah, I didn't remember Jason. Jason name dropped somebody. The doctor, you said. I, I don't know if it was the doctor. He just said a name, and he said that that person made you into this using Rize. I, I didn't remember that. I'm glad you brought, brought, brought it up because I was talking about other stuff. But... Yeah, and then the fucking red horned centipede came out. <laughs> I don't know. Something about, that doesn't. I don't know why that doesn't gross me out. There's so many things that do gross me out in the world, but for some reason that doesn't. I don't know why. I, I could not listen to that sound. Like you ever you ever hear like a bug is stuck inside your room and its okay, wings are buzzing against the wall? I really don't like that sound. See, I don't like certain videos of like like tiny things that are hard to get out. Like a centipede's huge, so I guess in my mind I feel like I could just reach it and grab it and pull it, it out. Went, it, it was inside. I know. But it's it's it harder for me to his brain. it's hard for me to accept something like a tiny spider crawling in. Mm-hmm. Something that like I don't know how to get out. Yeah. Or it's, I don't know that it's even in there. Mm-hmm. And then I watch a video of a spider and I start itching like my ear. Yeah. Just like checking my head. I've seen like the beginning of a video where like a girl had a moth stuck in, stuck in her ear and they had to use tweezers and at that point it's like, swipe away, swipe away. I don't need to see that. When I had my first tick, I was like, oh, those it was are... like traumatizing yeah. to me. They had to like get like little sutures to like yep. pick it off and then mm-hmm. slowly push out the legs that got stuck in and then yep. in the teeth. Because it'll still be alive. And that just like, I hated that. And that was like probably one of the early things that set off my like parasitic fear. Mm-hmm. Um, just the idea of something like 
inserting itself into you that you are unaware of sometimes. And so, like, every time I have to go into the woods, like, I just, like... So yeah, you gotta check. So I feel like every step. My line of work, too. I gotta check. Ugh. Yeah. So, warm warm areas they like. They'll go to your groin. Ticks. Uh, a thousand ways to die gave me many yeah. fears I didn't know I would ha- have otherwise. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm just some... There was also cool tra- transitions. Probably too many to count between going to the different worlds. The f- oh, we weren't paying attention. Yeah, well, I was just saying, there's a, there was probably too, ma- too many transitions to count, whether it be the flower to the feet to the worlds um, or just creative shots in general also rest in peace to the, the couple damn dude yeah that was upsetting and yeah I, I don't really know what to say like it's easier once again to say don't feel feel bad about it because Jason's really the the killer I, I don't I don't buy into it's a kind of he's fall with things like that like People will kill and they'll blame it on you because you didn't make the decision. But it's like, Jason was the killer. Mm-hmm. This didn't have to happen. It's Jason's fault. So, luckily, I will hopefully never have to face a decision like that. So I can't yeah. just say that it's easier to reject that idea. <laughs> yeah, pray to God I, I never have to face something like that because mm-hmm. um, it's horrible. I feel like I would do what he did and just say take me, but I don't. I feel like. I would maybe I would choose just to like you know save one and then at the at the sec then the doubt would come in is like Jason's the type who does this for fun right does it even matter if I choose and then I feel complexed about making the choice making them right and then he kills both of them yeah, after he chose yeah. you're gonna feel like shit yeah it's not gonna feel too good because Jason he, yeah I mean what well, you gotta take the word of the guy who's literally beating you for the sake of fun yeah also what a what a wild thing. He Because of his regen. Right. He can just keep getting beat over and over again. It's the perfect, like... Dopa- it's, um, it's the perfect dopamine factory. Season 2 Demon Slayer. Guy gets his arm cut off, boom, and immediately grows back out. Uh, I was gonna... Akaza? Aka- Akaza? Is that his name? I can't remember his name. Yeah. Blue guy. Uh, yeah. Red hair. Mm-hmm. What about him? Oh, just the regen. The regen. You can regen. Can't all of them do that in Demon Slayer? Uh, it, all the demons? I think all the demons can do that in Demon Slayer. That's not as fast as that. Maybe not. No, I mean the sheep. He's, yeah. he's an so upper, that's what I think. upper demon. Upper demon. That's what I think Jason... I guess Jason can't regen like that, but Con- it's, well, I guess Kaneki... That does explain, because you got people like Nishiki, who's like... It took him a while. Three two, two weeks to recover, I think mm-hmm. it was. There was like a time jump, and it was two weeks, and he was still not doing great. Yeah. Um, well, he is the one-eyed. Damn, dude, they didn't show the one-eyed out. They really didn't show any of that stuff. But it was, I will say, I guess a great finale. Great way to wrap up the season. I wish, I do, I do, I do wish that there was um, preceding story plots that led up to this finale. So that, like, we had more, like, build up to this point. Um, I it's guess a little this is, all over the place. Yeah, I guess this is a good time to talk about season one as a whole lot now. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first, first, sorry, you, you've you you've seen the show, obviously, but I want to know your thoughts as well for, like, when season one. Like, how do you feel? And then we can compare and contrast if we disagree or agree. I watched it in English. The voice actor for Kaneki is pretty good. I've never heard him in anything else other than Kaneki. Watching in Japanese, it's good to hear Tanjiro again. I, I feel like I've brought up Demon Slayer a couple times this season. There, I see some just like parallels. Like, like Kaneki is such a kind person. Tanjiro is also a kind person. And then, like I said earlier, that's his, what you call it, spirit world? Yeah. It's like, the, yeah. The flower dimension is like his spirit world. He's got a fresh sidekick or friend with yellow hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then these... Uh, this is hard to watch. This the these past two episodes. Yeah, they're a lot. Um, I know. I remember feeling uncomfortable watching it the first time. In season one, I wish we got more of Hide. Right. He just completely vanished. Right. Yeah. We've only just been seeing him do, like research. Like he he's the one who has stuff all over his walls, notes and stuff. Like he's tracking stuff, and they, and they haven't said anything about it. <clears throat> I'll say there's... It's also very... I don't know. What do you think about 
just this episode, he bring, talks about his mom. And they really go into it. How, how do you feel about that? Like I said, um, I like this episode a lot. It's a shame that the, I don't feel like the, the first, the rest of season one didn't compare to that. Mm-hmm. Like, I think this was a, a pretty deep and, like, a good discussion type of episode where the other ones, it's more, like, surface level stuff to talk about or, like, theory, theorizing. I won't say it's out of nowhere because the story does, well, maybe the mother part, but the story does, at its, like, core, tackle Kaneki and his humanity. I'd say I wish they went into it a tiny bit deeper. They sh- more. Season one. More. Um, Because I was going to, what I was going to say is, it's a small, this show is like, I don't even want to say 50-50 about ghouls and Kaneki, it's more so about the ghouls and the hate they get from the humans, and then it's about Kaneki, I'm I'm, I'm the, I'm in both worlds, so I'm the one who has to change, you know, that was episode 8. And it's a lot of like Kinami was a huge part of this of this first season. Kinami, um, I, I I don't know. I would say a little more than Sukiyama as well too. Suki, I I don't even like what was. I don't understand what his story was about in the first half of this season. Right. What he did for Kaneki, you know, it was more so like he got tricked. And this person tried to kill him. Yeah, I almost... And he's delicious. It was more so like, there's these big figures who don't know Rize's dead. Right. But they, it just comes to Kaneki. Yeah. And, I, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I, it's, it's a very... It's a hard question, too, because this is a judgment on one season. Right. Not the show as a whole. So and one, then, I don't I, I, know where it ultimately goes. And but, then I just told you, you know, the second season has nothing to that, do with the And manga. that's what's concerning because, <clears throat> for example, like, okay, I think season one was okay. I think it's suffering with the same problems that I think Cyberpunk has and it's not exactly what you might think if both the viewers are watching that show and the show. Um, but it's the twelve ep- the twelve episodes. It's not enough to tell. I know this should have been more for one season. Uh, I would even say I feel like this episode should have been longer. I think the show needed more time. I I liked the purple hair guy quite a lot. I thought so, he was yeah. fun. But now where alive. we are in season one, I'm just like, what was the point of that little side plot and all right. these like little side plots? Mm-hmm. For like the grander story, other than establishing that Kaneki's a one-eyed ghoul, I don't know. Which I just even think then we never even got an answer about. It was just this one-eyed is, uh, ghouls are rare. This is like a better disguised cluster flop of nonsense. There's just mm-hmm. a lot of stuff thrown at you. Yeah. Once I agree with you, Hide really was a non-factor oh. overall. Nishiki. I don't know what he contributes to mm-hmm. the story. It, it's more like there's just so many different little stories, and every single one, right. Kaneki, can, Kaneki can learn from. But I'd rather it be like delete a lot of those, have a couple, and let's learn from just a few. I feel like there's just a lot. There's a bit of an overload. There was, there's a I seen a picture. It, it's of three animes, and it says the plot lines in these animes, and it's like. Naruto and it has a, a, an arrow going uh, each direction but then there's also little arrows going this way yeah. and it shows another show and they're going all over the place and then it shows AOT and it's all in a circle like yeah. all the plots add up right. I feel like this this season would be all going in different directions right I, I like more interweaving mm-hmm. where cause uh, like even in my daily conversations I, if, if I feel like uh, I don't know how to incorporate this without doxing ourselves but like, if, if somebody's sharing something that's, like, an interest of them, but they have a tendency to stop taking interest in that weeks later, my mind will tune out if they bring up a new thing. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know how... Like, if, if things feel like they're not going to be, like, in your life a lot, and then they show up, it's like, I get, like... Mm, I get, like, shield. Like, I like things that feel like they're going to interweave or, like, play a deeper role. Like, surface level. Great examples, like, surface level people. That are in your life, want to like engage and like spend ten minutes with you, and then they don't talk to you for like five months or something like that, or like two weeks. I I, I go mm, because 
I don't want to engage if I feel like it's not going to like come it's back. It's not worth or, it. Uh, yeah, if it's not worth it. Yeah. And I feel you. And I feel that way for shows too. That's why the shows I tend to like are the ones I feel like are well planned out ahead of time so that it feels like our time spent with it was mm-hmm. paid off well. Yeah. And that's not to say this show won't pay it off. This is season one judgment only. But there's already so many little things. I'm like, will we address Ma- Mato's hatred for ghouls, his origin? Will we right, you- get an explanation for that one ghoul who turned around and happened to know the, the guy's name that we like discovered? We have this beef with Toka and her brother and a very weird flashback. We spent time with the Shiki and his girlfriend. Will that matter going who forward? Who was the woman that walked by Amo? Uh, who, yeah, who... Tomato's grave. Who's the guy with the white mask and the smiley face? We have all these characters. The girl... The, the guy with the stitch. The weird boss of the CCG. We got, um... The purple hair guys we said. And his whole cluster of... Uh, binge eaters. We got the whole Rize mystery. We got the whole doctor mystery. We got Kaneki's past, which has been brought up today. Um, we got Hide. What's his involvement in overall importance? And Who's then we the got like, out? and then we have the side plot with uh, the little girl whose parents died. Hinami. And I can see the surface reasons they exist in the story to get other things accomplished. It's world building, but like I said, it's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot of different things. Feels and twelve like, episodes yeah. is a very short time to get all say, those points. It's very across. crammed in. And that, and that's the one of the things I saw going before jumping into the show that the show faced criticism for. I I don't know if it was for season one or that season two and three do it even worse than season one is that it's probably season two is that um they jam pack too much that's and, probably and these be, first two and seasons and because of that they gloss over some deeper meanings mm-hmm. that the manga flushes out better mm-hmm. definitely a concern uh, all things I, considered I, I still think season one's banger it's good good it's good for me I like I like it um I had fun mm-hmm. I had fun and I'll say, as somebody who's watched this entire series, with that discussion that we just had, you know, season two being an alternative story, I enjoyed season two. It's just, there's a lot of plot holes. Yeah. A lot of plot holes. And, and see, here, here, I've been trying to, like, reconsider a lot of my ratings for shows in the past, just because I'll give a show rating, and then I, like, a month will go by, I'm like, I feel like you maybe it didn't something. deserve that. Yeah. Maybe it deserved a little bit lower, a little bit mm-hmm. higher, because... Demon Slayer Season 1 is a good example, because I, I think I gave it a 6, because I was pretty unhappy with it, all things considered. In hindsight, I think it was better than this, though. So, uh, in my mind, it's like, would this get a 6? Or should I give it a... Should I, should I give, like, both a 7? I'm feeling a 7 with this. Yeah, but then I'm like, I think Demon, I think Demon Slayer Season 1 was better for me, because I got more episodes. There was specific arcs that did flesh out and have impact i just my concerns that's a whole different video so you'll have to go see my reasons for why i said season one was what it was but this is definitely it's not my it's not my favorite uh i but it has potential it has it has potential this shows in my top 10 yeah uh and it's in a lot like i know a lot of people actually do like this show Mm -hmm. i can't say i'm like fully on board yeah I'll, I'll say there are characters I definitely like. I wish there was more of them. And there, there's some, there's some really, there's hidden gems I'll say in the show. While, while my, my feelings might not be super strong with it, there are some hidden gems. I'm loving Amon. I love Amon. He's a great character. Probably the best in my, my, my mind right now because there's, I like characters that have like that deep conviction, but are just and like chivalrous and like good. Um, I always like characters like that. And and while also maybe being on the wrong side of war, dealing with some morally gray territory that they find a silver lining for, am I doing the right thing? Because um, sometimes heroes don't know that. And that's that's what's really... That's what's problematic about the first season is Kaneki didn't walk that like that journey well enough for me. I was going to say, all this is because Kaneki was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. The first episode. He, he Which, like, I wanted to say also, yeah. this episode's called Ghoul. I feel like it would've been really cool if the first episode was called Human. Human. Oh. But it's called Tragedy. After all. Yeah. But, but that's... I feel like Kaneki was more of a plot device for the big story, rather than a character that got flushed out a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I feel like other characters got more time on their character development. 
Like Toka. You said Toka's more interesting than Kaneki. She is. She is. And and this is all personal opinion, of course. Yeah. This is not objective truth. I think there's a lot of characters in Kaneki. I loved when Jason beat the shit out of him because I was like, dude doesn't do much anyway for me, so at least he's in like a funny fight scene that's low-key comical. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually, I'd be curious. I want to know if I'm in the minority with that opinion. So when you all see this, do you agree with that kind of sentiment? Yeah. I, Based off season one alone. Based off season one alone, how would you feel about Kaneki? Because I'm not too much in his ballpark. I'm not really down with him. He's not my favorite. He is a sweet kid, but that doesn't mean you're a good character. You can write a sweet kid. Hide's a sweet kid. Yeah. Hide meets all the check marks Kaneki is. And he got nothing. And he did nothing, but so did Kaneki in my mind. Yeah. Other than be a part of the story because he's the, he's written in as the character. I love him in season two. I'll say that I love Kaneki in season yeah. two. You, this is definitely Toka. You might have hit. You might have hit it on the nail. There's Make, so much making him anonymous until the finale about anything that has to do with his life does yeah. come out of cost for his character development in the mm-hmm. show. When you don't know anything about the character, other than he's he is just and like steps up to the plate i don't feel like that's like that's why and that's why i said about the episode eight he he did that big speech and i while i rooted that's for awesome. that speech i didn't feel like it i feel like it did come out of uh, nowhere like i felt like i wanted that story to be more incorporated that felt better for like a toka moment because toka's mm-hmm. dealing with hating the ghouls and hating the humans kaneki wasn't really a part of that section of the story that was, was the sideline he was sidelined, and he just happened to show up and give the speech, but mm. I don't know. That's why it's, it's a little funky for me. I'm not sure. The, the, the people they fought should have been reversed. Yeah. Because Amum is upset about his friend dying, and Toka is like, I just want to live. Is there something wrong with me wanting to live? Yeah. You know? They should have been switched, but you just have Mato just being an absolute piece of dog shit. Mato. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think I have um, favorite much else to say of season one. Okay, and like in terms of like the story itself, I was just gonna say, uh, just in these last few minutes of the, of this talk, like I feel like there's three episodes in this season that should have just been gotten rid of. Yeah, Any turn, everything turn in something else. Yeah, or just put in later. Mm. Like the Sukiyama's whole part should have been wiped off. Right, your I, favorite I, character. I agree. I agree. It did nothing for the story. It just provided a villain, you know? And it led... I don't, I don't know. The conclusion of that was Toka being told she's beautiful. That's what... And and Kaneki letting Toka bite him. Yeah. We learned about the Kagunes in that and how important they are. They are they are the engine and blood is the oil for the, for the engine. I don't know. And Nishiki, too. I don't, I don't know. I mean, he was a very weird character feel, yeah. in this in this whole show. Yeah. A lot of this, a lot of this stuff that has just happened in these like uh, past six episodes should have been moved forward. It's a lot of stuff if that made. It was a lot of jam packed stuff. A lot of characters in only twelve episodes. Yeah. I say once again, not enough time. Nope. Not enough time. Um. All right. Favorites. Yeah. Favorite, um, I don't know, do you want to do three episodes, or do you want to just do one? We can. I might have to, like, take a look back real quick. I know, I know one for sure. Yeah, the first episode. Sorry, I meant, like, I know one in my head for sure. (laughs) Sorry. No, 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 you're good, you're good. I just wanted to specify for anyone listening. Oh, and also, when, when Kaneki bites Jason, and he flips behind, or before he bites Jason, he flips behind him, and he says, devour this. Mm. The version I watched, he says, fuck you. Yeah, dude. He says, fuck you. I don't know where the hell you're watching. Yeah. That is, uh, that is not something you'd be seeing on this stuff. Oh. Okay. Obviously, I think eight. That's my number it. one circular. Ten is on it. No, no not ten. Sorry. You like you like uh, Amon yeah. in episode 11. I like, Amon, I like Amon and everything. That's okay. not <laughs> um, Yeah, I liked eight. I liked ten. Damn, that uh, was good. I mean, too. nine was I, uh, eleven. Eleven was pretty hype. The battle, the battle with the the five hundred goals was a pretty hype. Mm-hmm. Like sequence. So I'll probably go with that eight, eleven, twelve. The latter half of the season did it more. We also got the the curly. The, oh, that well, he was in ten. Never mind. I was gonna say that's when we got curly cute too, but 
That was honorable mention. I liked all the villains strolling up to the bar to beat the hell, yeah. beat the hell or simp <laughs> over uh, Rize. That was that was pretty comical. That was actually funny to me. That was good. I'll do episode eight. Is number one. Okay. Just the parallels between Amon and Toka and what they're going through mm, yeah. is spectacular. And yeah. watching Kinami grow her kagune. Yeah. Was and seeing that piece of shit. She's cool. Uh, Mato die. Too. Episode 12 makes me feel really uncomfortable, but is it a good? It is a good episode, so I'll say Ghoul is number two. I do like Cloudburst. Cloudburst is a good episode, so I'll say Cloudburst is my number three. That's the one with the, the mom dying, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. I did love her Kagane so, so much. And that's when the, they you see Jason for the first time without a mask. Right. And he just bodies both of those He looks dubs. like... He has the face of the guy, the sharks from Shark Tales. He <laughs> really does. He yeah. looks like those fat ass white sharks. Mm-hmm. So you said 12, 8, and 6? 8, 12, and 6. Cloudburst. Okay. All right. Top three favorite characters. And one honorable mention. And it doesn't have to be because they're your favorite, just because if you want to mention them. Toka is number one. Jason is number two. Uh, I'll say Kanki number three, and honorable mention would be uh, ah fuck. All right, forget Jason. All right, Toka number one, Amon number two, Kanki number three, and an honorable mention would be Yashimaru, Whoa. coffee o- coffee shop owner. Gotcha. The like the elder man. Such a wise old man. I love him. My honorable mention is gonna be Toka because I think she has the most potential going forward. And then my top threes. Number three is probably Jason. Hell of a design. Super scary and intimidating. And if... Well, I don't know if he's going to die or not, but we'll see. Number two. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Actually, get Jason off the list. I'm putting yep. Toka as number three. Toka's mm-hmm. number three for me. Number two is my boy Purple Hair. Tsukiyama. Tsukiyama. He's hilarious to me. I don't care what y'all have to say about it. Number one, Amon. Amon. My guy. He's awesome. I love him. I aspire to be like a man like him. He's awesome. I like guys. I don't know. I just, I just do. I like people that I want to aspire to be like. I don't know. It's just it's just how I am. If I see somebody that I feel like is honor bound I, I, or has like, who, as I perceive as like good moral standing, I just want to be that guy. I'm like, I, well, I, I want just, to be like him. I will just say he is out for revenge. He's in the progress. Against the rabbit. He's got, you can, you but you can like see the heart. That he's, you yeah. can see the heart. He's a good guy. That's what I mean. It's just misdirected. Mm-hmm. You can see that there's so much heart and potential for his character. And I love that kind of stuff. He's obviously a season one, not fully fleshed. But I feel like he has more potential than a lot. He's good in season a two. A lot of characters. He's good in season um, two. And then favorite scene? Well, what's what's your honorable mention? I don't. I don't know if I want one now. Okay. I don't know if I, I'm. I'm pretty actually happy with that list. Just those three. I mean, Kaneki was pretty cool in this finale. He was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I. I'll give it to Kaneki. Right. Yeah, I'll give it to Kaneki for most improved. All right. So we're doing favorite moment, and then we're we also doing. Uh, oh wait, never mind. We already did favorite episodes. My bad. Favorite uh, moment. Are we doing one or three? I think you one. can do as many as one. I'll, I'll do one. Okay. Dude. Oh man, that's hard. I don't know. I didn't think about it for a second. I wanna, I wanna flip it though and say like, are we doing favorite moment, but also favorite scene, or that it was that the same thing? I mean, it, if you want to make it a whole scene, that's fine too. I mean, cause like Cause for I, me, it would probably be like Kanki and Amon going for you. Show. Yeah, probably. I really that's enjoyed the the shot of Kanki floating in the water, and then Rize comes up behind Grabbing him. him. But then I also love when Toka's sitting on top of the building in the, in the, mm, on the blue sky uh, on the church. church on the I love both of those. That's cool, too. And that awesome shot of Nishiki's face. Honestly, even, I was going to say, even Nishiki the, yeah. doing, like, the protecting, that was pretty yeah. cool, too. Nishiki just, like, just not looking at Toka like, come on. Yeah. So those are my three. Yeah. And I it's, ba- it's, it's banger when Kaneki finally gets white hair. He finally gets it. Yeah, it's a better look on him. Yeah, it is. Now I just have to see what he looks like with the mask on. Any last thoughts? Any last thoughts on season one? 
I think we said everything, everything that needs to be said. Yeah, well, jinx. that means, guys, you need to tell us your thoughts on season one. Try to fill in what we ask of ourselves, favorite characters, favorite moments, favorite scenes, your criticisms, and the things you liked about it. And give a rating, too. We always give ours. Give, a, give us your 1 out of 10, your Yelp review. And we'll see you in the next reaction. Love ya. Bye! Bye. We're just two dudes on the internet. Just remember that. <laughs>